what is mere the choice. Domination by the master, master, or total annihilation. We're all in mortal danger. Everyone in the village. Everyone in the whole world. Watch out for the wings there. Five rounds rapid. Almighty oh, Asal, kill him! John Pertwee's story from 1971 and it's from his second season because the master's in every one of the five stories and at the end of this one he gets captured so it was sort of like experimental having a villain in, in each story it stars John Pertwee as the Doctor Katie Mannon as Joe Grant Roger Delgado as the Master I had to watch it on a DVD, colourised as well, all five episodes. So the picture quality, it, it's good. But you, it, in places it looks a bit grainy and you can kind of tell it's colourised. Christopher Barry directed it and he's the same director who did um, the first Dalek story. So he's, he's a he's a really good director. He's done other stories as well. It was also wrote by Barry Letts. He uh, used a different name when he when he wrote the story, but it was wrote by him. It's regarded as John's best story. Um, it's slightly overrated, but I do appreciate how good it is. It's a really good story. It has the master trying to summon up a, a demon to take over the world, the Earth. And he's really good in this story, Roger Delgado. I kind of thought, like in other stories, he was like um, a bit overrated, like a bit bland compared to other masters. Watching this story, I thought he was his performance was uh, quite brilliant. Actually, he was really good. He plays the character of the master in a more subtle type of, of way. He's not too. Um, over the top like the other masters like Anthony Ainley and some of the others. The good thing about this story is all the cast have something to do with even sort of like small characters like Mike Yates and Sergeant Benton. They've all got something to do because the in the story they kind of pair them off with other characters. Sergeant Benton will be paired off with this character Miss Hawthorne and Mike Yates is paired off with Joe so uh, it's good how they did that, give them uh, the moments in the story. Like a kind of horror story. So it was like Doctor Who doing a horror story. And it kind of worked uh, with the limitations that uh, sort of like a children's type programme has. Sometimes children programmes can do quite scary stuff. Uh, like shows like Shadows, that was for kids. So uh, it... They can do uh, creepy stuff. The story's kind of similar to like a, a Philip Hinchcliffe story. Um, like early Tom Baker did this type of story. Where they tried to make it creepy and stuff. Gothic kind of horror. Reminds us a little bit of um, films like The Wicker Man, The Devil Rides Out. Also I like kind of how the BBC did them Christmas ghost stories. Like creepy, subtle, horror type of uh, storytelling. The thing uh, that I like most about this story is there's a kind of unseen presence. It's um, manipulating events. Um, there's always a strong wind. There's um, direction signs that the wind blows and turns. Turns the sign around. Bits like that. There's things getting blown over. So there's some quite creepy shots as well. Dark caverns and stuff like that. Another thing, um, it's good when there's like a hate barrier surrounding the village. So other characters can't go in to save them. Reminds us a little bit of Under the Dome, uh, that Stephen King story. They seem to do more outdoor filming in this story and it kind of shows. It looks more sort of like feature film sort of standard. Instead of studio scenes. Because um, you can tell the difference when it flicks towards stuff filmed outside. 
looks kind of more grainier and when they do stuff in studios it looks kind of brighter and sometimes it can be a little bit distracting but with this story they seem to do a heck of a lot more outdoor filming and I, I like that I like it when stuff's shot on film there's a lot of good action sequences I like uh, when John's driving around in Bessie and there's this helicopter chasing them trying to make them drive into the heat barrier and John's uh, doing his driving and stuff and there's um, a motorbike chasing after it's really good I, I, I like that when they do a little bit of action Mrs Hawthorne's a good character she's kind of like the white witch and she's um, saying that the devil's gonna pay her there's like realistic settings as well um, it's um, you say village pubs and villages and some of the villages are kind of like um, a satanic cult that the masters um, uh, uh, laden and it is, there's some quite creepy scenes actually when they're dressed in the robes and stuff and there's a scene where they're gonna sacrifice a cockerel so uh, it's quite it's like a little bit more adult than usual the brigadier is good with his uh, famous line uh, Jenkins chat with wings five pa five rounds of Robert <laughs> Uh, really funny. Yes, I see what you mean. Never mind, we'll soon fix him. Jenkins? Yeah. Chap with the wings there. Five rounds rapid. It's not a perfect story though. Um, the One of the monsters, you call him uh, Bok, he, he, looks, um, he looks good when he's in dark um, caverns and stuff. Like when he's playing like a statue, it's creepy. But when he's outside with daylight, it looks really naff, to be honest. Hey, a bloody fella jumping around with bloody wings. He looks soft as bloody shit. <laughs> the story's um, clever because it's kind of the theme science versus superstition magic. And it's kind of summed up when... Um, John Pertway's doctor uses a, a remote control in his pocket and, he, and people think uh, his car's moving by itself, Bessie. The, like, they're looking and they can see it moving and stuff. And uh, he pulls his remote control out of his pocket, kind of showing that, like, people think stuff's magic, but when it's properly explained, there's always, like, scientific explanations. And that sounds kind of symbolic of what the story is trying to say. Unfortunately, um, there's a poor ending when uh, the big bad guy pops up and Jo says she'll sacrifice herself. And this makes him go all funny and he, he kind of has a, a breakdown and vanishes. Uh, it's like really naff ending and it kind of spoils the otherwise perfect story for me i would have um rated this a little bit more highly apart from that awful rushed kind of typical ending that doctor who sometimes does i like the scene when um john's captured and they're doing a maypole dance and he's tied to this uh thing and they're going to burn him as a witch that's when he uses his remote control to move Bessie and he does stuff like that. I also like the final shot where John says there is magic in the world, Joe. And you see like a top uh, high shot down below of them all dancing. It's kind of like the, the scenes that you see when films end, like a top view down shot looks really good I, I like uh, that so overall I think I'd rate this story I'd almost give it top marks 10 out of 10 apart from like that little awful ending where Joe's gonna sacrifice herself and Zal doesn't uh, kind of has a, like a, a, a nervous kind of breakdown and vanishes 
can't really explain explain what happens to him. He just like goes crackers and vanishes. So I'd give this story nine out of ten. It is one of Jones' best. I wouldn't kind of put it in his top five though, because the standard of stories in his area is that good. But um, it is one of his better ones. Slightly overrated, but still excellent. So what would you give it bones out of ten? I'll give the book a bugger all! It was as scary as my bloody ass! Okay folks, bye! Bye!